Today, I'm touring one of the oldest buildings in Santa Clara, the SES Hall, also known as the Portuguese Hall of Santa Clara. We're going to take a look inside and tell you about its history and its significance to our city. Hi, I'm Vinicius Brazil and welcome to Santa Clara Living, where we explore and learn about the people and places of our amazing city, Santa Clara. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do so and hit the bell icon to be alerted every time we post a new video. If you've ever driven down Lafayette Street towards downtown Santa Clara, you've probably seen the Portuguese Hall. It's been there since 1896, making it one of the oldest buildings here in Santa Clara. It was originally founded by the early Portuguese community of Santa Clara as a place to host social gatherings, meetings, and festivals. It's enabled the Portuguese community to continue the traditions from the old country for over a hundred years. So how is it right here in Santa Clara, we've got a Portuguese hall that's been around for a hundred years. In order to understand that, we need to first learn about how the Portuguese first came here to Santa Clara. Now, you may have heard about Portuguese explorers sailing around the world in the 15th and 16th century, but this isn't a story of conquest. This is a story about immigration. The Portuguese have a rich history here in Santa Clara, dating back to the 1800s. You see, the early Portuguese that came to Santa Clara were not from the Portuguese mainland. Instead, they came from a small group of islands in the middle of the Atlantic, the Azores Islands. Because of its location, the Azores was a very popular maritime stop for ships crossing the Atlantic to be resupplied. It's here that young, ambitious Azorean men seeking adventure and a better life would board these visiting ships and sail the world. It was men like these who eventually arrived on the shores of California and made their way to towns like Santa Clara. California in the 1850s was booming, primarily San Francisco. Men from all over the world were arriving at her shores in search of gold and opportunity. As the gold dried up, many choose to stay and work. Growing up in the harsh environment of the Azores, these Portuguese men were no strangers to hard work. Here they quickly gained a reputation for being honest and hardworking and were employed throughout the state in various industries, ranching, fishing, dairies, vineyards, the shipping and docks, and later on in orchards and canneries. Through their labor, they were able to buy land and many sent for their family back home. Some even sailed home to get married and bring wives and children back to California. As word grew about the opportunities in California, so did the number of immigrants coming to California from the Azores, as well as Madeira Island and mainland Portugal. Although work was plentiful, life wasn't easy, and many immigrants encountered hardship. Most Portuguese immigrants had arrived without family and no one to fall back on in times of need. Throughout California, where the Portuguese settled, they formed tight-knit communities. They built meeting halls and churches. Here they were able to recreate important traditions of their homeland and celebrate their culture in a new country. Within these communities were organizations that developed with the purpose of helping members, especially those in times of need. You have to remember in the late 1800s and early 1900s, there was no social security or welfare programs in the United States. If someone was sick or hurt, these fraternal organizations would step in and offer help and financial assistance. If a woman was widowed or children orphaned, these organizations existed to support those families. Santa Clara was one of the earliest examples of these Portuguese communities, and because of this, this hall was built and the SES organization was incorporated. The Portuguese culture in Santa Clara. When the SES organization was incorporated here in Santa Clara in 1896, its charter stated that its main purpose was to hold the Festival of the Holy Spirit every year and provide assistance to its members and community in cases of death and sickness. Santa Clara in the early 1900s was comprised of many ethnic groups, 
Along with the Portuguese, there were Italians, Spanish, Irish, and Germans. The various groups had concentrated themselves in different parts of the city with their own social clubs. At the time, the Portuguese were one of the largest of the various ethnic groups. However, something happened in the 1950s that dramatically shifted the demographic makeup of Santa Clara to a city with a very prominent Portuguese population. In 1958, there was a volcanic eruption in the Azores. What became a humanitarian crisis resulted in the United States government passing the Azorian Refugee Act, opening the door to what would become the largest wave of immigration from the Azores and Portugal to the United States. By 1970, there were estimated to be about 100,000 people of Portuguese descent in California a large majority originating from the Azores Islands. They estimated about a third of those living right here in Santa Clara County, and many of them in Santa Clara. It was at this time that my family had originally immigrated to the United States and settled in Santa Clara. As a young boy growing up in Santa Clara, so much of my social life revolved around the Portuguese community and this hall. To be honest, I don't know if there was a better time to grow up in Santa Clara as a Portuguese American than in the 1980s, and much of that involved events at the SES Hall. Several times a year, the Portuguese community would host large festivals. The most famous is the Festa do Espírito Santo, or the Festival of the Holy Ghost. Dating back to the 13th century, Portuguese Queen Isabella offered prayers of the Holy Ghost seeking an end to famine and promising to build a church in his honor. After the church was built, the queen, who was known for her good works, arranged a banquet for the poor of the city. The banquet became an annual affair, and today, the Festival of the Holy Ghost commemorates this tradition. These festivals in Santa Clara started with the packed St. Clair's Church, where the Mass was held then a large parade to the SES Hall down Lafayette Street with several marching bands playing, a procession of queens and their side maids, and men of women carrying statues of Catholic saints. As a young boy, I could remember the streets lined with people along Lafayette to watch these parades. The parade would end right here at the front of the hall, announcements were made, and people would start to enter the hall. Built in the late 1890s, the SES Hall is situated on roughly an acre lot. The hall itself is about 8,000 square feet in size. The hall features a chapel, a large ballroom, performance stage, and bar. The main entry of the hall is actually in the rear of the property, off the parking lot. Here you enter the lobby where the restrooms are located. The ballroom is massive and features high ceilings, a raised stage for a live band or DJ, audio and lighting system, as well as an adjoining bar. Through this corridor, you're connected to an adjoining room, typically used for meetings and also used as a staging area for events or a buffet. There's even a mechanical dumbwaiter connecting the basement kitchen to the main level. And of course, the basement or mess hall. The basement houses the kitchen, they host bingo here, and as you can see, it can accommodate a very large group of people. To me, this is the most important area of the hall. It's where the sopas were served. The biggest part of the festival and most anticipated event is the sopas. Here hundreds gather and are served the traditional sopas, a hearty meal of stewed cabbage, carrots, and roast beef. I can still remember being a young boy with my family, waiting in line and entering, and sitting down at the butcher paper line tables and eating sopage. The property has its own parking lot, which can be secured with gates. During the festivals, they set up a stage here where the band plays and hold an auction to raise money for the organization. To this day, this tradition is practiced not only here in Santa Clara, but throughout California in dozens of halls that stretch from Northern California, the Central Valley, the Bay Area, and as far down as San Diego. Just in Santa Clara, there are four festivals that the Portuguese community hosts every year. So if you ever find yourself on Lafayette on a Sunday morning and hear a marching band playing, 
You can bet the Portuguese community are hosting a festival and you're welcome to join. For over a hundred years, the Portuguese community of Santa Clara has been hosting festivals here at the SES Hall. It's important to note that in recent years, the Portuguese population of Santa Clara has been declining. An improved quality of life in the Azores and Portugal has resulted in a decline of immigration of Portuguese to the United States. Also, the high cost of living in the Bay Area has also forced many Portuguese who grew up in the Santa Clara area to move away. Although the festivals have declined in attendance, the Portuguese community continues to keep their traditions alive. What's also been interesting is that the festivals have become more multicultural as descendants of Portuguese have intermarried with other nationalities and still want to raise their children with their culture. The band, which provides music lessons to anyone who wants to join, has become multicultural as well. It's hard for me to imagine a Santa Clara without a Portuguese community. Just like Santa Clara experienced a surge of Portuguese residents in the 1950s and 60s, a new wave of immigration in recent years has brought many families from all over the world, including people from China and India. Lured by the opportunities of Silicon Valley's high-tech industry, these new residents to Santa Clara will bring new traditions and their own festivals and culture to Santa Clara. The original immigrants that first came to Santa Clara were responsible for the growth and success of the food industry and other industries that Santa Clara was originally known for. This pattern continues on today with the new ethnic groups that have made Santa Clara home and their contributions help make Santa Clara a center for high tech and innovation. One thing is certain, the SES Hall will remain and serve as a reminder to future generations of the Portuguese that came and settled and flourished here in the city of Santa Clara. Thank you so much for watching our video on the SES Hall of Santa Clara. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and let us know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Also, share with us your thoughts and your memories of the SES Hall. We'd love to hear from you. The SES Hall is available for rent for all your special occasions, parties, weddings, dances. If you have an event coming up for your company or group, contact SES to get more information. The rates are very reasonable for a venue of this size and they have a flexible policy allowing outside vendors and catering. If you'd like to see more videos like this about Santa Clara, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notified. Also, if you've got a great story to tell about Santa Clara or a person that we need to spotlight on a special Santa Clara living video, please leave us a comment below. I'm Vinicius Brazil and I hope to see you next time on Santa Clara Living.